Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, I promised I would come on today and talk about uh, the new year and how I'm already living it. It's not even January 1st and I'm already rocking and rolling in my new year routine. And it's so simple that I've been sharing a bit about it and check out the new YouTube channel. I posted about it last week, the four steps for a fresh start. Okay, you could start it now, you could start it anytime and it really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be January 1st, but um, I just want to talk about this a little bit and see if I can't give you a head start uh, because you've got, you know, today and tomorrow and it'll be January. So let's start now. But you know, uh, something that has really been, that's really struck me lately is that a goal without a plan is just a wish. Okay. That's someone else's quote, but I just absolutely adore it. And, and Today I posted about how um, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you actually fall to the level of your system. And I adore that quote too. That was James Clear, it's Atomic Habits, it's a book you have to read. And I'm sure that when I get finished reading it, I'm gonna have so much to share with you on the podcast here or, or live, but it's just really incredible how having a system has been what's kept me successful and it's kept me sane and anytime i talk to a mom who's just struggling if you're struggling look at your system if you don't have one that's why you're here that's why you're here in crunchy super mom the community because that's what i do that's what we do together is create a system it's not my system you can borrow my system it might not work for you but it will teach you how good a system can work and then you can structure it to create it um, to fit you exactly how you need it to be so I've always been an ambitious person, it's true. And I have a feeling that if you're here, you're an ambitious mom too. So you have no problem creating these steep goals and you have the audacity to take a really hard stab at actually reaching those goals. But things happen, your baby starts teething, you get pregnant when you weren't expecting it, you have morning sickness longer than you did last time, your spouse is traveling more than they normally do, or you guys get the flu and then you get ear infections after that, right? It's always something. And it it's that it just takes you off of those good intentions that you have. But the problem is we're not, um, it's just that we're not serving ourselves anymore. We have family members that can impede our goals. And it's not that we don't wanna help them, it's just that these goals always take the back seat to diapers, dishes, and dinner, and we, can kind of feel, well, it sounds bleak. It's not nearly as exciting as making a New Year's resolution. I mean, does anyone remember being, I don't wanna say an age because I kinda of had kids a little bit later than most of my peers, but let's just say back in our 18s, our 19s, our teen years when we were adults, but we were still pretty young, and you made like a New Year's resolution, like I'm not gonna go out on dates at the bar anymore. I never did that, so I don't know. I'm just making it up. But you know, you had some kind of fun, easy, New Year's resolution and now it's something like I want to get back to my pre-pregnancy weight or I want to keep the house cleaner or I want to yell at my kids less or I want to spend more time with my spouse or have a ladies night out right these are all these things that you thought just automatically came with life as an adult and they don't those are like our New Year's resolutions it sounds really depressing in a way especially when they don't stick so let's flip that script Let's create a goal with a plan. So let's not be wishing that we could do something different in 2020 or whatever time that you're listening to this. We don't have to wait until the first day of the year to make a new plan, but it's okay if we did. It's okay if it's the middle of the year and we're making a plan. It doesn't matter. The point is to make a plan that is totally stick with a bowl. And I know a lot of people are putting that a bowl on the end of words and making it stick and I'm gonna do stick with the bowl, okay? So first of all, let's look at last year. What fills you with gratitude about last year? Okay, you have to write this down. What moments do you find the most, uh, well, almost regrettable? I hate to, to use the word I, regrettable, but do you have moments that were regrettable? Are there things that you feel like just squandered your time? I'll tell you that being sick for almost four years, uh, I absolutely feel like I don't regret those times. There was nothing I could do to change those times. But just like mentioning it brings tears to my eyes, like my eyes start stinging because I had a brand new baby and I missed out a lot on that, right? And so those moments are kind of regrettable. But what do we learn from that? And uh, while being sick was like my greatest challenge, I learned the most from it. I actually came into my gift and the things that I am 
here on earth to share with others. So there's always something that we can learn from those moments that are super hard on us. So there's encouragement for you there with that, but make sure you write these things down. What were you hoping, to, where were you hoping to be in your life at the end of this last year? You know, or you can look at it if you're looking at this later and it's not the end of the year. Uh, where were you hoping to be at the end of this month or even this week or the end of the day? Just write that down. Where were you hoping to be? And be really specific. I'm not really a touchy-feely, journal-y type person, but I have found that sometimes, um, especially as moms, because we are attentions pulled in so many different directions, if we aren't really, really clear with the finite details of what it looks like to do the things that we are craving, then we don't know when they when we achieve them. I hope that makes sense. Like for if you just make a, a general uh, suggestion to yourself, like, oh, I want to get fitter or stronger. Well, what does that really mean? Well, I want to be so strong that when I do squats, I don't have to hang onto the wall or I want to do 20 squats without stopping. You know, be really specific because our time, again, our attention's pulled in many different directions and our time is so short that we just, time, it passes by so quickly and we don't even see the small bits of progress that we've made. So it's so important to be super specific and yeah, journal it. I, like I'm telling you, I am not a journal person, so sometimes I use Google Keep and I'll talk into it and it writes it out for me so that I have cataloged exactly what I'm hoping to achieve or what it looks like to me to be successful in whatever goal that I have created. So that's reflecting on the past. Let's dream about this upcoming year. What would you do this year if you could do anything you wanted? And again, you got to be specific. Okay, write this out. Then... Take a step back from that. What are you willing to sacrifice this year to achieve your one big dream? Okay, so pick one big dream. It's okay to have many, but pick the one that you can achieve this year. And what are you willing to sacrifice to achieve that dream? And what happens when you reach that big goal? Like who benefits? How do you feel about it? How does it impact your family? How does it impact your life? What are all the things that uh, fall into place because you've reached that goal? write those down and be really, really specific about those too. And then what happens if you don't? Okay, this, if, if your goal is one that you're like, well, if I don't, it doesn't matter. No one cares about it but me. No, think deeper than that. Think deeper than that. Maybe no one else will be disappointed, but you'll be disappointed. And will you be resentful? Will you feel like your life is passing you by because you didn't reach that goal? When you can answer those questions, that when that's when you really know that you're digging deep and finding a goal that you're passionate about. Because here's the thing, when you have to sacrifice things to reach that goal, you're going to be thinking about what happens if I don't. My husband's not going to be mad. My kids aren't going to be mad. No one's going to even know that I didn't reach this goal except for me. And while our worth is not uh, defined by what we accomplish or anything like that, we all know that sometimes we want to achieve something more than just being a mom. It could be as simple as opening your home and, and having a hospitality hour twice a year and that is like more than just a mom, right? That could be your goal. That is something that you want to do. So it's important to understand what happens if you don't reach this goal because you have to think about that when you're trying to sacrifice the things that you need to sacrifice to make those goals happen. And why are we sacrificing? Because our goals require action. And so you're giving up things to give yourself time to carry out your action plan. So let's make a plan, right? Let's break your big goal down into pieces. A lot of people like to take your big goal for the year and you break it down into 12 little steps and then a weekly step. Sometimes that is so dang hard, you guys. It's not necessarily worth it. So instead, think about dominoes. If you knock over this domino, it leads you this much closer to the next domino that gets you to the end result, which is your goal. Think about those. Maybe there's five, maybe there's seven, maybe there's 13, or maybe there's 52. Whatever the case may be, break it down into small steps. In order for blank to happen, what else needs to happen? Okay, and then what do you need to do to make those small pieces come to to reality, those little small steps along the way. Do you need to enlist someone else's help? Do you need the support of your spouse and your neighbor and your friends? Do you need a babysitter? Do you need to give up something that's taking up your time that has absolutely nothing to do with your goal and it really doesn't serve you? Think about these things because you have to sacrifice in order to reach the goal. You're either gonna have blood, sweat, or time 
you're gonna have to give up one of those to reach your goal. And that's just the cold hard truth of being a mom and trying to strive for something huge. And then how much time do these steps require? You have to budget out your time. Um, if you haven't heard me talk about this, go to the Crunchy Supermom blog and look up the time budget. I am all about it. Just like your money, every minute needs a job, okay? Even the hours that you're sleeping, you are allotting eight hours of your day to sleep, at least eight hours of your day to sleep. And so if you're putting in a new goal, you have to find the time and you have to budget that time and make sure it fits on a certain day and you don't over budget your time, okay? How will you hold yourself accountable? Are you gonna journal? Are you gonna write it down? Are you gonna tell someone? Are you gonna tell us here in this community? Whatever it is, you need to hold yourself accountable. What about some rewards? Are you going to give yourself some rewards along the way for completing each piece of those things? I think that's a great idea. In fact, uh, one of my goals that I reached last year, I rewarded my kids for them helping me. And so it motivated everybody, right? And I have another little uh, thing, part of my fitness goal for this year, and I already started it months ago, was I told my kids that every time mom's uh, little step tracker hits 10,000, 10,000 steps, they each get five chore bucks. Okay, five chore bucks is like doing three and a half big chores around the house. So it's a big deal. And so of course they wanna go on a walk and of course they wanna go scooter even though they don't feel like it because they know that when mom's little step tracker meets that 10,000, then we all benefit. So create some rewards, even if it's not for yourself, it could be for your family. So that's how you make your plan for this. Now, how do you feel about your plan when you get it done? And this is just for one big goal for this new year or this new period of your life, whatever it may be. Are you feeling like that one big goal won't be enough or that you just can't figure out how to fit that into your busy and chaotic life? Because that happens. And I understand that. It's hard to see your future as productive when you aren't managing your baseline duties as a busy mom. So that's something that I want you to think about too. When you get through this exercise and take some time, and I'll have some resources for you on the blog when this uh, comes out live, you can uh, go to crunchysupermom.com and go forward, uh, forward slash new year, new mom, and you'll have some resources there for helping you do these little journal prompts. But when you get done with that, and if you feel like you just don't know how you can fit it in, uh, maybe you need to take a look at how much time you're spending on your household chores. I have a cleaning routines freebie that'll help you out with that. I have a meal planning freebie that'll help you out with that. And just about anything else that you need to kind of get those baseline chores down so that they are not costing you too much time, okay? So if you are feeling tired, tell me that you're feeling tired. I'll get you a little tool for that. And uh, I have workshops, workshops coming up all spring and all through the summer that can help you out with all this too. So. I hope this was helpful. I'm already in, it's already January for me. There's no date. It's January, no date, 2020, because um, I'm rolling into the new year, ready to go. I hope you are too.